and I'm truly honored to serve as your Master of Ceremonies for this historic tribute to our veterans. The theme of this year's ceremony is Valor, Sacrifice, and Peace. The 80th anniversary Pearl Harbor Remembrance Commemoration seeks to pay tribute and to say thank you to the courageous men and women who worked tirelessly to defend and secure the liberty that we all enjoy. Today we pay tribute to those members of the greatest generation who rose to the challenge beginning with that horrific day here at Pearl Harbor, December 7, 1941. And throughout the dark days of the war that followed, faced with a world threatened by uncompromising tyranny and shattered by war, the survivors of Pearl Harbor, as well as the generation that fought and won World War II, did so with uncommon courage and an unselfish commitment to preserve freedom and to secure peace. To our honored guests, the World War II veterans, please remain seated while all other guests please rise as able for the arrival of the official party. The official party for today's ceremony includes Mr. Tom Leatherman, Superintendent, Pearl Harbor National Memorial, National Park Service. Navy, Region Hawaii, and Naval Service Group, Middle Pacific, arriving. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy, arriving. Side boys, post. Guests, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is customary on December 7th that we observe a moment of silence at 7.55 to commemorate the beginning of the attacks on Oahu. We will pay tribute to the 2,403 service members and civilians who lost their lives on that calm Sunday morning 80 years ago today. At 7.55, USS Chung Hoon will sound her ship's whistle to begin that moment of silence. So ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please bow your heads as we observe that moment of silence to honor the events that occurred at this very moment 80 years ago today.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise, as able, for morning colors and the performance of our national anthem and state song by the U.S. Pacific Fleet. Color Guard, parade the colors. Retire the colors. Yes, please be seated. It is customary for ships passing the USS Arizona Memorial to pay their respects by rendering honors. Approaching, you will see the guided missile destroyer, the USS Chung Hoon, commanded by Commander David Holland, a native of Lima, Ohio. USS Chung Hoon is a 43rd ship in the Arleigh Burke class of Aegis guided missile destroyers, the USS Navy's most powerful destroyer fleet. She was commissioned in September 2004 here at Pearl Harbor. 
Her namesake was Elaine Rear Admiral Gordon Paella Chung Moon, a Hawaiian native and the first Asian American to graduate from the U.S. Naval Academy. He was also a crew member of the USS Arizona, who narrowly missed the fate of his fellow shipmates on December 7, 1941. Admiral Chung Hoon served with distinction during the war and is recipient of the Navy Cross and Silver Star for conspicuous gallantry and extraordinary heroism as commanding officer of the destroyer USS Sixby. USS Chung Hoon's participation in the ceremony is the all the more significant as she passes close by America's newest destroyer, the USS Daniel Inouye, named after fellow Hawaiian native and member of the greatest generation, Senator Daniel Inouye. Today, in addition to rendering honors to the USS Arizona crew still entombed in the watery grave, Chung Hoon will also render honors to the Pearl Harbor survivors and World War II veterans who have gathered with us here today. These men and women in the center of our gathering represent the greatest generation of Americans in our 245 year history. No one before them and no one since has been asked to answer the call to serve and sacrifice in a global cause the way that they did between the years of 1941 and 1945. It is only fitting that we, the generations that follow, honor them for their example of faithful service. On the morning of December 7th, the USS Oklahoma was moored alongside the Maryland at Foxtrot 5, where you see the USS Missouri today. The Oklahoma capsized as a result of the attack with a loss of 429 sailors and Marines. This morning, we are honored to have with us Mr. David Russell from Oregon, a Pearl Harbor survivor who was stationed aboard the USS Oklahoma when the ship capsized. Mr. Russell will face the USS Arizona and represent the World War II veterans in a return salute to the USS Chung Hu as she passes close aboard. Mr. Russell, hand salute. Ready to? Carry on. And we would like to thank the crew of USS Chung Hoon and thank you, Mr. Russell. In the Hawaiian culture, the religious leader of spiritual advisor is known as Kahu. Today, we are pleased to have, for our invocation, a Hawaiian blessing offered by Kahu Hekoa. Kimahalo 
We ask your Aloha Spirit as we celebrate and commemorate on this 80th celebration anniversary day. We thank you for the hands that have served our community and our nation. And so we pull in this blessing with much aloha with all of our ohana. Amen. Amen. Mahalo. Thank you, Kahu Hiko. Before we hear from our co-hosts for today's ceremony, we would like to play a special audio message from President Biden honoring our veterans and in recognition of the 80th anniversary of December 7th. Hey, everyone. And thank you for, for participating in Beyond Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941. Is still that day that lives in infamy, 80 years later. I'll never forget visiting the USS Arizona Memorial 10 years ago. Pay my respects to the 2,403 patriots who lost their lives in that terrible December day, 1,177 on the Arizona alone. Seeing those names described in the marble, sprinkling flower petals into the sea, I brought my granddaughter, Naomi, with me because we must always remember what Pearl Harbor meant for our country, generation after generation. To honor those who perished, salute the courage of the greatest generation who stood to defend our nation and our values in the world. And remember, all that came after that fateful day. Not only our entrance into World War II, the enormous sacrifices we made as a nation, and the hard-fought victory by the, our allies, but also decades of diplomacy and international leadership that followed to rebuild a world devastated by war, transform forever former enemies into close allies, and create a rules-based international order that spurred more than seven decades of relative peace, unprecedented economic growth, and undreamed of human innovation. So today, as we once more commemorate the courage and sacrifice of those who fought and died in the attacks on Pearl Harbor, we remember the debt we owe all those who put themselves on line for our freedom. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, Mr. President, for your kind words. Today's event allows us, the generation of the 21st century, to recognize, honor, and give thanks to the generation of military veterans and civilians who served during World War II. Their lives and their legacy will never be forgotten. We are grateful to have over 100 veterans in attendance with us today from all around our great nation to commemorate Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day and to honor us with their presence and their stories. Unfortunately, we recognize that we could not have all the veterans with us on site today. Though they are not with us, they are not forgotten. With that in mind, at this time, we would like to present a special welcome message from Lou Conter, a Pearl Harbor survivor who was stationed aboard the USS Arizona on the morning of December 7th. Lou will honor all of the veterans who could not make it to today's ceremony, but who still hold a place in our hearts and in our thoughts. Aloha. I'm Lou Contra, a World War II veteran and Pearl Harbor survivor. Thank you for inviting me and to participate from California. Every year we honor the heroes who lost their lives on December the 7th, 1941. Over the course of two hours, more than 2,400 servicemen and civilians were killed. 
Almost half of them went down with the USS Arizona and remain there to this day. I was aboard the USS Arizona that morning and witnessed the awful destruction firsthand. I'm grateful to have survived, to have had the opportunity to serve throughout World War II. But for thousands of people, the first day of the war was also the last they saw of it. The loss of those lives showed us what was at stake. At the same time, their courage ignited a spark that rallied Americans all across the country and redefined the meaning of service. For those of us who survived that terrible day, we all share something in common. December the 7th, 1941 changed our lives. Not just for those of us on the USS Arizona or at Pearl Harbor, but throughout the United States. It affected those of us who served as well as our families, our friends, and our neighbors. Millions of Americans were mobilized overnight, traveling thousands of miles to answer the call. Many took on roles that they had never dreamed of. Some who had never set foot beyond city limits were now crossing seas, oceans. The war introduced a new realm of possibilities, opportunities that hadn't been available before, but also terrible dangers that tested our character at every turn. Our generation faced those possibilities head on with valor and selfishness. Far from home, we went above and beyond the call of duty, often making the, <clears throat> the ultimate sacrifice for our fellow Americans. Those efforts not only earned the title of the greatest generation, but also set a new standard of service for those who have followed. It is a great honor to recognize the men and women who were part of this history, and especially those who didn't get to see the legacy they would leave behind. Before I finish this, I want to say the 2,403 servicemen killed that day, 1,177 of my shipmates aboard the Arizona, God bless you. Today is a day to pay homage to those men. A lot of people call us heroes, but we're really not heroes. The ones who gave everything, their lives are the heroes. Mahalo. We are grateful to Luke Hunter for taking the time to share his thoughts with us on this important day. Well, today's National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day commemoration is co-hosted, as it has been since 2005, by the National Park Service and the United States Navy. Here to share an official welcome on behalf of the National Park Service is Tom Leatherman, Superintendent of the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. Mr. Leatherman has been working for the Department of the Interior for over 32 years, starting as a biological science intern at Pinnacles National Park in 1989 while still in college. Most recently, Mr. Leatherman served as superintendent at four National Park Service historic sites in the San Francisco East Bay, Eugene O'Neill National Historic Site, John Muir National Historic Site, Port Chicago Naval Magazine National Memorial, and Rosie the Riveter World War II Homefront National Historical Park. In October of this year, he arrived on Oahu as the new superintendent of the Pearl Harbor National Memorial. Please welcome Mr. Tom Leatherman. Good morning and aloha. Among the dignitaries we welcome today, and please hold your applause to the end, the Honorable David Ige, Governor of Hawaii, the Honorable Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy, Admiral John Aquilino, Commander, U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, 
Admiral Samuel Paparo, Commander, U.S. Pacific Fleet. Rear Admiral Timothy Cott, Commander, Navy Region Hawaii. Cindy Orlando, National Park Service Regional Director, Interior Regions 8, 9, 10, and 12. Members of the Consular Corps and the Senior Executive Service. And lastly, I'd like to recognize all of the other flag and general officers, additional elected and appointed officials, and community leaders. A komomai, welcome. To this esteemed gathering of World War II veterans who are seated in this center section here in the audience, I am awed in your presence. I am honored to be able to look into your faces and to give you my remarks. You inspire so many, including myself, and I am proud to be here honoring you and your fellow veterans today. Thank you for all that you have done in service to our country. As we gather this morning to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the attack on Oahu, I reflect on the changes and events that have happened here at Pearl Harbor in the last year. In addition to the effects of the pandemic and the limitations imposed for your protection, including attendance at this event today, these are just a few of the challenges that are affecting us. As stated in my introduction, I've been here just under two months as the new superintendent, and I'm deeply grateful for the support the park staff has given me and for the unwavering support of two key partners, the United States Navy and our nonprofit partner, Pacific Historic Parks. Every single time the National Park Service has asked for support, they did all that they could to help us. Among other daily challenges, we successfully implemented significant dock repairs as expeditiously as possible and have been able to pull together this event um, that's also being live streamed for those that could not make it in person. It is clear to me the relationship between our organizations is as strong as ever and I look forward to building an even stronger during the time I'm here. Thank you. As each year passes, we say goodbye to more and more friends who served on December 7th, 1941. We are fortunate to have with us here today 151 World War II veterans. Actually, I think that number might be 150 because I believe one of the Pearl Harbor survivors is actually in the hospital here. So our thoughts go out to him today. That includes 32 active military Pearl Harbor survivors as well as 13 civilian Pearl Harbor survivors. And we hope that more are watching live stream and the safety of their homes. I want to especially acknowledge their service right here 80 years ago today, as well as their families that are here in attendance. Weather permitting, later this afternoon, we will be, we will be conducting interment ceremony for Lieutenant Harvey H. Harvey H. Milhorn. U.S. Arizona survivor who passed away in 2002. He will join his shipmates in their final resting place in the waters of Pearl Harbor. This will likely be our last interment ceremony of a USS Arizona survivor. Just yesterday, I met someone who witnessed the attack as a child from his home above Pearl Harbor. His story represents a larger number of first-person accounts, which help us to understand the larger impact of December 7th on the greater Oahu community. In the years to come, we will have fewer and fewer first-person accounts. But our resolve to ensure their stories are not forgotten will only get stronger. Together, we can continue to honor those who served and sacrificed by sharing the diverse stories and history related to the events from before, during, and after December 7th and the U.S. involvement in World War II. Just like this year's event theme, valor, sacrifice, and peace. We must never forget those who came before us so that we can chart a, path, a better path for those who follow. It is my honor to serve at Pearl Harbor National Memorial. It is now my pleasure to introduce Rear Admiral Timothy Cott, Commander, Navy Region Hawaii, and Naval Service Group Middle Pacific. Rear Admiral Cott is a native of Newport, Rhode Island, and a 1990 graduate of U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, Kings Point, New York. His sea tours include service as the executive and commanding officer of the USS Hopper. Most recently, he was commander of Carrier Strike Group 1, embarked on board USS Carl Vinson. He assumed command of Commander Navy Region Hawaii and Commander Naval Surface Group Middle Pacific in June 
of 2021. Please join me in a warm welcome for Rear Admiral Cott. Aloha. Thank you, Mr. Leatherman, for that introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished visitors, welcome. Most importantly, on behalf of our entire military family and the gracious citizens of Hawaii, I'd like to welcome the veterans of Pearl Harbor and World War II that have joined us here and throughout the world virtually for this historic 80th anniversary. The veterans, if you would allow me to please thank the hundreds of military members, civilians, historians that have made this day their passion for the last six months and overcame some significant obstacles with the weather in the last 24 hours. They have dedicated themselves to make this day the most special for you, and this will change your lives forever. Veterans, it is truly an honor to welcome you back to Pearl Harbor, so we may extend our aloha and deepest appreciation a recognition of your selfless service and sacrifice throughout this day in 1941 and in the days and years that follow. We are grateful to have your families here as well. I would also like to acknowledge the families of the veterans who are here today to honor their loved ones who are no longer with us. We are forever grateful for their service. As a sailor with the privilege of command, I am in awe when I look out on Pearl Harbor every day and see the memorials that surround this iconic base. They are reminders of the sacrifice of so many who paid the ultimate price for our freedom. In addition to the Arizona and the Missouri, the memories of the crew of the USS Utah on the far side of Fort Island the crew of the USS Nevada on Hospital Point, the numerous monuments to include the USS Oklahoma and points of history throughout Fort Island, the shipyard, the submarine base, Hickam Airfield, out to the tarmac of Kaneohe, all represent a constant and necessary reminder of that infamous day. They stand as testaments to all of us who serve here in Hawaii and around the world, both military and civilian, of the generation that placed others and countries before self, rushing to answer the call of duty when our nation and the world lay on the precipice of darkness. The veterans here today represent their shipmates, Marines, battle buddies, wingmen, families and friends, aptly named the greatest generation. Your steadfast endurance and gallantry continue to inspire and set the absolute standard for today's generation of Americans following in your footsteps, serve our, serving our country both in and out of uniform. Finally, as Commander of Naval Service Group Middle Pacific, I'm honored to welcome the Navy's newest destroyer that you can just see off to my left, USS Daniel Inouye to the fleet. She represents what a powerful example of a legacy being passed on from one generation to the next, like those of you who are here with us today. Senator Anoye embodied the values that saw your generation through an area of uncertainty and the cauldron of war. All of you embody the values such as hard work, responsibility, serving family and community, answering the call to serve despite the unknown danger that lay before you. On December 5th, we lost one of our most visible and prominent greatest generation members, Senator Robert Dole, a proven and decorated wounded warrior, accomplished statesman, and leader in our Senate. And maybe most importantly, the dearest friend and peer of Senator Enroy. There's a story that uh, Senator Dole and Senator Noy, Senator Dole from Kansas, Senator Noy from Honolulu, were injured, gravely injured, one week apart in April 1945 in Northern Italy. 
They both met each other for the first time in the Percy Jones Army Hospital in Battle Creek, Michigan. They became friends and learned how to play bridge together. And from what I understand, uh, Senator Inouye was undefeated. Prior to Senator Inouye leaving the hospital, and knowing that he had lost his right arm and could not become a doctor, he asked Senator Dole what his plans were and remarked, I'm going to return to Kansas, run for office, and eventually end up in the Senate, and then known as the Bob Dole Plan. Senator Inouye went on to be the first elected congressman from Hawaii in 1959, and Senator Dole was elected to Congress from Kansas to the House in 1961. Uh, Senator Inouye arrived in the Senate in 1962 and called Senator Dole and said, then represent Dole, I'm here, where are you? Senators and Lieutenant, Inouye and Dole, great friends and battle buddies, now reunited in formation on the internal parade field, served our country in both war and peace with civility to ensure our continued freedom and opportunity. They are just but one example of your generation the greatest generation. Thank you to each and every one of you for attending today and allowing us this once in a lifetime opportunity to honor you person in person here and throughout the world. It is my distinct honor to welcome our keynote speaker to the stage, Secretary Carlos Del Toro. Secretary Del Toro is a 1982 graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy and served for 22 years as a surface warfare officer in the Navy, rising to command. He had the honor of being the first commanding officer of the USS Bulkley BDG-84, named after the iconic World War II hero and Medal of Honor winner, Vice Admiral James D. Bulkley. Secretary, Secretary Del Toro was born in Havana, Cuba, and immigrated to the United States in 1962. Secretary Del Toro's leadership while serving in the Navy in industry and as our service secretary, embodies both the opportunity and freedom of our country that you fought so gallantly to defend. Please join me in a warm aloha for the Honorable Carlos Del Toro. Good morning, everyone. Aloha. Is that the best you could do? Aloha. What a beautiful day it is today. Some of you may say it's a beautiful day. It's raining out. It's cloudy. But I don't see those rain. I don't see the clouds. I see the shining spirit of all of those that lost their lives under 7 7, 1941, shining down on us today, thanking us we're memorializing their lives, their sacrifice, and that of their families since that fateful day. So thank you for joining us. Air raid on Pearl Harbor. This is no drill. Those words were broadcast to the fleet from right there on Fort Island at 7.58, 80 years ago. Two minutes later, an armor-piercing bomb penetrated the decks of USS Arizona, igniting her forward ammunition magazine. The resulting explosion and fire killed 1,177 sailors and Marines, the greatest loss of life ever on any U.S. Navy ship. In just under two hours, 21 ships of the United States Pacific Fleet were either sunk or damaged. 188 aircraft were destroyed. Another 159 were damaged. The material costs were grave. The human costs were even worse. 2,403 dead, 1,178 wounded, sailors, Marines, soldiers, and civilians. Many of those civilians were Hawaiian Americans caught in the fury of the attack throughout the island. We honor them here today as well. We gather today to remember all of those that we lost 
on that infamous day. But we also gather to honor the bravery and the skill of all who fought back, those that saved lives and those that persevered. Because it wasn't just the fleet that was attacked here at Pearl Harbor. It wasn't even just our nation. It was the very future of freedom and democracy around the world. No one understands the value of those words. More than someone born in a land where neither freedom nor democracy exists. My family fled Cuba when I was a young child seeking a new life in the United States. We found that better life because of the honor, the courage, and the commitment of those who have always fought to protect our nation's freedoms. We found it because of the veterans, you all sitting right here today, who also served from every background. Afri African Americans like Petty Officer Dory Miller, who earned the Navy Cross for firing back at the enemy from his ship, the USS West Virginia. Irish Americans like Ensign Francis Flaherty, who earned the Medal of Honor by sacrificing himself on the Oklahoma, guiding shipmates to safety. Native Americans like Rear Admiral Francis J. Mee, who navigated a cruiser during the attack on Pearl Harbor. Hispanic Americans like Marine Private Richard Trujillo, a new recruit, a new recruit serving aboard USS Nevada, and Naval Aviator Manuel Gonzalez, one of the first American casualties of the war. Italian Americans like Marine Gunnery Sergeant John Bassoloni, who would later earn the Medal of Honor for his heroics on Guadalcanal. Asian Americans like Army Lieutenant Daniel Inouye, who we will honor tomorrow with the commissioning of a destroyer in his name, that ship right there. Hawaiian Americans like Ben Kanahili, a civilian who was awarded the Medal of Merit for his heroism that day. And many women like Ann Danio, one of the nurses aboard the USS Solace at Fort Island who tirelessly treated over 130 wounded and burned sailors and Marines as the attack continued all around them. We remember each of them and so many others of every background and birthplace, all Americans who fought that day or volunteered to serve soon after. They lived up to our national motto, et pluribus unum, of many one. They, we, are all Americans. They made it clear that the United States will never sacrifice our beloved principles. And they sent a clear signal to authoritarian states everywhere that we will never back down. Just like those brave souls, generation after generation of Americans have risen to carry freedom's torch over the past eight decades. And as the USS Arizona Memorial reminds us, freedom does not come cheap. We gather today not only to mourn those who were lost on December 7, 1941, but to remember why they were here in the first place. They answered their nation's call. They placed themselves in harm way. And they fulfilled their oath to the fullest extent. We will never forget warriors like Senator Bob Dole, who served with valor in Europe and carried the wounds of war through a long life of honored public service. We will never waver in defense of the peace and security forged through the sacrifice of that greatest generation. And we will carry their legacy forever in the United States Navy and in the Marine Corps. A reminder of that legacy sits in my office in Washington, DC. It's a ship's bell, time-worn and battle-scarred. It is stamped with the name USS Vestal, a repair ship that was secured outboard of the Arizona on that fateful December morning. When Arizona exploded, six sailors were trapped in a fire control tower. One of the stranded sailors was Petty Officer Don Stratton of Red Cloud, Nebraska, who died earlier this year. And I just recently met his family. 
In his memoir, he wrote, the ship was ablaze. Our shipmates were dead, wounded, and fighting to live. We were all wounded and had no way out. But these sailors were not alone, nor were they forgotten. A sailor on USS Vestal, Petty Officer George George, spotted them. He tossed them a line, despite orders to cut loose from the sinking ship. He urged these wounded sailors to climb across the sagging rope, hand over hand, over the burning water. All six of those men made it across to safety. We sometimes talk about our victory in World War II as if it was inevitable, only a matter of time. But there was nothing inevitable about one sailor's decision to toss that line. And there was nothing inevitable about the courage it took for those wounded men to get across from the lowest point in the line to the safety of the vessel. And it took millions of individual acts of valor and courage at home and overseas to carry our nation across the long ordeal of World War II. Today, we remember and honor them and the many Pearl Harbor and World War II veterans who are with us today. We carry your legacy as we stand ready once again to defend freedom and democracy around the world. Let there be no mistake, in the face of authoritarian threats, we will never back down. We will defend our freedom and stand by our partners and allies around the globe. We will always be like Petty Officer Joe George, ready to toss a line to all of those individuals and nations in need. We will always be like Petty Officer Don Stratton, ready to cross through the fire to continue the fight. So on behalf of a grateful nation, on behalf of our President and our Secretary of Defense, I thank all who fought through that long and horrific war and all the families who served and sacrificed along them. I also thank those who rose to defend freedom in Korea and Vietnam, the Cold War, Desert Storm, Iraq, Afghanistan, and every other conflict. I also want to thank you, the American people, for your unwavering support of our military and their families. It's so very important to us. And most of all, I thank the men and women who continue to serve today in our nation's military. They are also brave souls. May God bless each and every one of you. May God protect your families. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Del Toro. Beautiful speech. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to draw your attention to the back of the pier as active members of each branch of the military in Hawaii honor the heroes, military, and civilians of December 7th and World War II with a wreath presentation. As caretakers charged with a mission of preserving the legacy of valor, sacrifice, and peace secured by the veterans we honor today, National Park Service Ranger Francisco Garcia will carry the 80th anniversary commemorative wreath at the head of the line. Each of the federal services holds a white mum with their individual service seals that they will place in the wreath. The Hawaii National Guard will carry a red and yellow lei representing their seal and the royal colors of Hawaii. The completed wreath will represent the shared sacrifice of each of the services and the civilians who worked and suffered alongside them on Battlefield Oahu and throughout the long and costly war that followed. It embodies the hope that future generations will never forget the many sacrifices of the generations that went before and carry on that legacy to ensure our shared values remain strong and defended today and for generations to come.
The Hawaiian Department was the Army's largest overseas department in 1941. Soldiers served in bases from Fort Shafter to Fort Kamehameha to Schofield Barracks in central Oahu. In all, 16 soldiers who were not members of the Army Air Corps were killed on December 7, 1941. Sergeant Samir John will present the mum representing the United States Army. Over 800 officers and enlisted Marines were serving aboard ships at Pearl Harbor at the time of the Japanese attack. A total of 109 Marines lost their lives that day. 105 perished aboard ships in Pearl Harbor, and four were killed in action at the Marine Corps station in Eva. Corporal Joseph Zariner will present the mum representing the United States Marine Corps. One thousand nine hundred ninety nine sailors lost their lives as a result of the December seventh attacks on Pearl Harbor and Naval Air Station Kaneohe Bay. Many sailors remain in their final resting place in the waters directly behind me. They gave their lives defending their ships and helping their shipmates escape the devastation of that day. Information Technology Specialist First Class Phoenix Lingerfeld, crew member of the USS Pearl Harbor, will present the mum representing the United States Navy. Though not yet a service in 1941, the United States Air Force was formerly referred to as the Army Air Forces. Here on Oahu, they were known as the Hawaiian Air Force. 217 airmen were killed on December 7th in defense of Battlefield Oahu. Staff Sergeant Jasmine Blunt will present the mum, representing the United States Air Force. America's newest military branch, the United States Space Force, carries the proud legacy of the Army Air Forces as guardians of America's interests around the globe. Specialist for Alan Allwood will present the mum representing the United States Space Force. At the time of the attack, service several U.S. Coast Guard vessels were pre present in Honolulu. Several of them came under enemy fire in defense of Oahu. Storekeeper Second Class Melody Montaldi will present the mum representing the United States Coast Guard.
On that fateful morning, 49 civilians lost their lives as a result of the attack. As a base for all of the military services, the then territory of Hawaii and its citizens played a major role in one of the history's greatest salvage and repair efforts, quickly restoring most of the damaged ships and expediting their return to the fleet. Hawaii citizens opened their homes and businesses to servicemen stationed in the islands and to those returning from war patrols. And today, the state of Hawaii remains a strategic and welcoming home board to our military, continuing to offer aloha to all. Sergeant First Class Landon Dela Cruz, Hawaii Army National Guard, will present the lay representing the territory of Hawaii. We are forever grateful to the soldiers, sailors, and Marines, the airmen, Coast Guardsmen, and civilians who fought courageously to defend their posts and their homes on that fateful day and throughout the Pacific Theater in World War II. The wreath presenters will now stand as representatives of the men and women of today's military and civilian workforce and salute the Pearl Harbor survivors and World War II veterans in attendance. The salute is a timeless expression of honor and gratitude and a recognition of the passing of a torch from the greatest generation to the service members of today. Wreath presenters, thank you. Would all Pearl Harbor survivors and all of our World War II veterans please remain seated so that we and all who are present here today can honor you. We acknowledge that on December 7th, 1941, and in the years that followed, you executed your duties at your posts and weathered the storm of war. It is because of you and all those who served 80 years ago that we enjoy freedom and liberty in this great country. Will everyone else please stand and join me in expressing our appreciation to these heroes who bravely stood fast and tough, responding and prevailing. A grateful nation applauds you today. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the benediction, Marine Corps rifle salute, and echo taps by the Pacific Fleet Band. Captain Steve Mills, Region Chaplain, Navy Region Hawaii, will now offer the benediction. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your love is infinite, your grace unmatchable, and your mercy never ending. We remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and their loved ones who carried the banner since that day of infamy. Their sacrifice was not in vain. They paved the way for those who followed. We ask your blessings on those here with us, the heroes who picked up the mantle of war, those who had no idea what the future held, but with courage and steadfastness in you, they sailed into harm's way. Even though many have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, your presence protected and comforted them. Gracious Father, watch over those deployed and in harm's way. Guide their hearts and minds with your rod and staff into quiet meadows and still waters. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank you, Captain Mills. Stand by for rifle salute. On behalf of the National Park Service and the United States Navy, thank you for attending today's observance of the 80th anniversary of the attack on Oahu, valor, sacrifice, and peace. And for continuing to remember and honor the sacrifices made by those who served here on December 7th, 1941. To those who are watching our ceremony through our online broadcast, we also extend our sincere aloha. Thank you to the Defense Media Activity for providing the live stream We'd also like to thank Pacific Historic Parks, whose critical assistance made this ceremony possible. Please remain standing for the departure of the official party. The Honorable Carlos Del Toro, Secretary of the Navy, departing. <laughs> Navy Regional Hawaii and Naval Service Group, Middle Pacific, departing. Mr. Tom Leatherman, Superintendent, Pearl Harbor National Memorial, National Park Service, departing. We ask that you, our honored guests of the greatest generation, remain seated as we are dismissed. For the rest of our guests, in the interest of the health and safety of our veterans, we ask that you depart the pier and clear the area so that we can allow the veterans to move unobstructed from the ceremony. Please enjoy patriotic songs performed by the United States Pacific Fleet Band as you depart today. This concludes our ceremony. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day and that you will always remember Pearl Harbor.